Most recently, there was a meeting between the top five lightweights. Charles Oliveira, the former champion, versus Benil Darius, who was on an eight-fight winning streak. Few people believed the Brazilian would win after his devastating loss to Islam Makachev, but he managed to get back on a winning streak beautifully and get the fans talking about him again. He is predicted to have a new title run, but the champion is still the Dagestani fighter who has already been able to defeat today's hero once. What will be the outcome of the new meeting? Will it be a crushing defeat or a much more competitive fight? Let's get to the bottom of that question together. Today, we're going to look at the lightweight title race and see what Charles can do to overcome the great Dagestani wall at the second attempt. Make yourselves comfortable and get ready to watch. You're on MMA Rocket. Let's go. Let's start with the background of this confrontation. Charles Oliveira made his league debut in 2010 as a green guy with some good jiu-jitsu. After two wins in a row, he began to lose some more experienced opponents and decided to go down to featherweight. Probably the worst decision of his life, because he got into a long black hole, failed weigh-ins, early losses, and deteriorating health, and the status of a fighter who will forever be on the backside of the top 15. After another failed weigh-in, Dana White explicitly stated that he forbade him from fighting in this category. After defeating Will Brooks, Charlie lost by knockout to Paul Felder. It seemed that even in his home category, he would flounder like a fish on dry land, hoping he wouldn't get fired. After that, however, he went on an impressive winning streak, and if the wins over Guida and Miller didn't surprise anyone, the choke victory over tough grappler and wrestler Kevin Lee showed the skills of the rising fighter. In this fight, he showed all the progress he has made over the years, attacking jiu-jitsu from the back, tough punching and pressing. It was a start. After he dominated Tony Ferguson and nearly broke his arm, after an eight-fight win streak, he finally got a chance for the title, and his opponent was Michael Chandler, who was once the Bellator League 2 champion. There was a lot of talk about the Brazilian giving up under pressure and not knowing how to go all the way, but at this point, he showed his fighting spirit and withstood a barrage of punches while attempting to finish from his opponent. The fight ended with a knockout at the start of the second round. Then, today's hero became the lightweight champion. However, there were a lot of statements from the fans. They called him a media failure, a fighter little known to the general public who doesn't even know English. They called him an accidental champion. What can he do? Just a fighter before his first title defense. And comparisons with the past champion Khabib Nurmagomedov did not stop. The talk went on until Oliveira faced Dustin Poirier in the octagon. The former interim champion defeated Conor McGregor twice and increased his level of recognition and at the same time his aura of a tough fighter. In the first round, the fighters had a competitive stand-up fight where the Diamond came out victorious, but in the second round, the champion took the advantage and choked the challenger in round 10. That's when everybody started talking about Charles and his skills. The popularity of the fighter soared to space. The spectacular style and recognizable image did wonders, but afterwards, something happened that no one expected. On the eve of his title defense against Justin Gagey, Charles failed to be weighed, thus losing his championship status. This has never happened before in the history of the organization, so it was impossible to try to see it coming. Oliveira choked the title challenger in the first round, but was unable to try on the belt. The belt lost its holder, so the title became vacant. Charles and Dagestani fighter Islam Makachi had to fight for it. The current lightweight champion was well known to the public a few years ago. Suffice it to say, he's the main sparring partner of Khabib Nurmagomedov. The fighter unexpectedly lost by knockout in his second round in the league, but after that, he gave a long series of victories coming to the title fight. Many people were openly saying that the fighter's level of opposition was weaker than that to the Brazilian, but everyone was also well aware that he had the highest level of skills. Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov's school gave him everything he needed to dominate the UFC. Before the fight, there was a lot of controversy about the winner, although most favored the Dagestani. In reality, we saw a confident performance from Makachev. He showed the highest level of fighting and finished the people's champion in the second round with an armbar. That's when it all began. Charlie withdrew from the media space for a while and even turned down the opportunity to hold a rematch at the tournament in Brazil. The fighter decided to take a little break and rethink everything. Let's move on to the second chapter of our video. While Islam Makachev was defending his belt against featherweight champion Alex Volkanovsky, Charles was looking for an opponent to return to. There was no better opponent in the division for the challenger bout than Benil Darius. The Iranian-born fighter had an impressive eight-fight winning streak and was very close to the title fight. And among his defeated opponents, Tony Ferguson and extremely promising fighter Mateusz Gamroth both stood out the most. Many believed in Darius's victory after his fight with Gamrot, but as the experience proved, Oliveira became the new nightmare for all lightweights. The former champion won by knockout in the first round, retaining the top ranking. But at the same time, there was some difficulty in finding worthy contenders for the lightweight title. Fans are saying that Charles deserves to fight for the title, but we're not sure that the organization would be very happy to give him that chance. 
The second fight between Dustin Poirier and Justin Gagey at UFC 291 for the BMF title is coming up. The guys in that pairing could also get a title shot, even though both fighters have already lost championship fights twice against Nurmagomedov and tonight's fighter. In terms of competition, a rematch between Islam and Du Bronx would be the most logical option, even though the first meeting went pretty non-competitive, but we can draw some conclusions about how the fight could go. Let's first analyze the fight with Benil Darius. What moments in this fight seemed to us successful to Charles' side? 1. Stand-up The first thing I'd like to note is some progress in the stand-up. If we look at his past fights, Charlie often goes from the very beginning and going forward and throwing himself at his opponents, as he did with Islam, defending poorly as he did with Gagey. The time Charles showed progress in kicking in defense, he took most of his punches on the block and continued to go methodically forward. In his past fights, an aspect had very often put him in the way. It was because of his reckless style and poor defense that he often got knocked down and lost his moments. In his fights with the defending champion, he made many mistakes, like the back-to-back -back kicks early in the first round and the unfortunate knee that sent him crushing to the canvas. He opens up a lot during that, and it's a good idea to take that out of his game plan. And the style of his supposed opponent is very important. Islam Akachev is not like his friend Khabib. He doesn't press and he doesn't fly with missed punches. He is a more accurate and technical fighter. His punches are accurate, clear, and realistic. In his fight with Volkanovski, he showed a competitive fight on his feet and even staggered his opponent a couple times. He has power in his hands, and most importantly, Makachev is a counter-puncher. He won't fly forward with an overhand and fly to the canvas from his own swing like Gagey did. He waits for his opponent to make a mistake and then strikes once. If Charles wants to win, he'll have to be even more careful than he was against Benil. You want the belt? Wait for the right moment and hit. 2. Experience The second point we can highlight is the result of the first meeting. Then Charles made a number of mistakes, both during preparation and during the fight. During the preparation, the Brazilian put a lot of emphasis not only on defense, but also on counter transitions near the net. This seemed to be a good thing, but he worked it out with fighters much easier than even himself. Charlie was able to show some good defense against takedowns near the net in the first fight, a point that should be preserved. The most important moment of the fight is not to go into the parter with your opponent with such grappling. There can be no doubt that today's hero is a top-notch grappler. However, his opponent himself has good skills as well as control. At UFC 280, he showed that he can control the Brazilian and keep him from throwing techniques. You just have to deny him space, which Benil was not able to do. After defeating the Iranian fighter, the fighter said that he wouldn't change anything in his game plan, that he had to be himself. But I hope his coach and team don't hold the same opinion and explain to him clearly how not to do it. Then, it was as if the fighter got nervous and made a lot of reckless steps. A sharp start, high pressure, and so on. In the second round, he pulled himself together at first and worked well, until the flying knee moment after which he was almost knocked out. If they do proper work on their mistakes, then we can hold out hope for a different result to the fight. 3. Islam Makachev vs. Alex Volkanovsky Perhaps the most important moment in our video. The whole fan world saw the fight between Alex Volkanovsky, the featherweight champion, and Islam Makachev live on TV. Many expected an easy victory from the Dagestani, but we saw an extremely competitive fight, the result of which still some argue. Personally, we have no doubt that the Dagestani won the fight, but we can't deny that it was very hard for him to win. We can draw some conclusions from this fight and understand how to act against Makachev. Pressure as practice shows, the Dagestani fighter presses his opponents and makes them tired a lot during the fight. He does it not so actively as, for example, Khabib, but still. In the fight, we saw how he was already being pressed. Islam Makachev has always been famous for his cardio, but at the moment when he started to be driven around the cage, it became harder for him to maintain the same pace and as be as active in the fifth round. Volkanovski himself admitted in the post-fight interview that he should have come under pressure from the beginning and crushed him. Makachev is more methodical in his actions than Oliveira. He's not as active in the stand-up position and less active on the ground than Khabib. If he's going to go all the way and push the champ back, he's going to have to think about protecting himself from the takedowns, first of all. Khabib's help Remember those pictures after the fight with Hooker, where Nurmagomedov standing in Makachev's corner was controlling him with a joystick? It seemed to just be a meme, but the picture turned out to be very true. The fighter spent his first title defense without his friend in the corner and it had been a great effect on his actions. If we remember their work in tandem, the fight with Thibaut comes to mind, where the corner marked the combination with which Islam knocked out his opponent, and also the fight with Hooker where the former champion told him to push his right foot on his head during the Kimura in order to apply the hold perfectly. As it turns out, without his friend's help, he can't orient himself properly during the fight. 
He might forget a certain action to get to the reception. He might not see an open area in the defense. After the fight with Volk, Islam said that he received a call from Khabib at the time and pointed out the mistake in the fourth round when he was in the back mount. Islam is far from being a sharp fighter as his mate and he doesn't see the things that he should be seeing. That's not a bad thing. Every fighter has his trainer in his corner, but it's not them fighting, it's the fighter himself. Without the former champion in the corner, Makachev will make mistakes and give the advantage to today's hero. Lack of skill on the back What I mean, in the fifth round, Alex hit the lightweight champion perfectly and he ended up in the guard where he started throwing punches. A lot of people were shocked that he couldn't do anything from that position. Yes, he was tired, but even so, a competent fighter could come up with something from such a position. And to find out the origins of his problem, Bilal Muhammad will help us. Not long ago, he gave an interview in which he talked about how he trained with Khabib's team. During the sparring session, he found himself at the bottom of the former champion and wanted to go for the submission. Because according to the opinion of the Dagestani, he should not fight from that position because it is not a winning one. He must get up or get a sweep. They are going to stand up straight away and not give a single moment to their opponent. And that is where the main problem lies. The fighters on this team don't work out at this position, or if they do it, very rarely. If you go deeper into Islam's career, you can remember the fight against Chris Wade when he found himself in the same position at the end of the first round. He just doesn't have the skills to defend against overhead strikes. That's his weakness. Now imagine the pleasure Charles would have in elbowing Makachev from that position. Just a feast of brutality. Using these gaps in the game of the current champion and his own experience, Charles can come out to win a possible rematch. And in conclusion, let's talk about the statistics. The Brazilian is now the second strongest lightweight in the world, as his past performance showed. Not one in the lightweight rating can beat him. In our opinion, only Armand Saryukin can compete. But we can't talk about such a fight yet. There are two men in the lightweight division, and this situation has happened more than once in the lightweight division. There are two weight classes today that have the same situation, the featherweight division and the middleweight division. And you know what those three weight classes have in common? Three dominant champions and three former champions at the top. In the cases of Adesanya versus Whitaker and Volf versus Holloway, one thing stands out. In their first fight, Adesanya and Volkanovski defeated their opponents and became champions. But already in the rematch, the fights were already very competitive, and so much so that there are still disputes about the results. As we see it, the situation with Charles and Islam is identical. The second meeting will be even more competitive and exciting. We can't say who for sure will win, but one thing's for sure. Even if Oliveira doesn't get the title, sooner or later they will meet, and we will see a real battle between two mixed martial artists that will cause both excitement and controversy in fan circles. And that's the end of our video. Will the Brazilian be able to make conclusions from the last defeat and analyze the fight between Islam and Volk? Or will he lose as easily as he did last time? Write in the comments what you think of this fight, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. MMA Rocket was with you. Bye, everyone.